I've laid out the four timing chain guides that we're going to install into the crankcase. On the crankcase there is two different sizes. Should be one brown timing chain guide and the difference between the brown and the blacks is going to be the height. If we take a look at them you can see the distance from the pin to the guide rail is different and that's approximately a two millimeter difference. If we try and use the light brown guide rail in all locations it will result in the chain slapping as it won't allow for a constant pressure against the timing chain. We're going to install the timing chain guide rails. So on the timing chain guide rails there is two holes that locate with a specialized bolt. The one hole the bolt will go through freely and is just a second support where it's going to rest on it. The first hole has a little plastic locking mechanism that is going to lock into this groove on the specialized bolt. So to install these, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to pick up my chain. I always want to start with the top one first. The timing chain guide rail will go with the long surface pointing in towards the intermediate shaft so we can see the differences in length. Short side is here, long side is here. To get this started, I'm just going to hold the chain up while I slide my hand in and then I'm going to push in and locate that first hole and just get it started on that timing chain guide. Just screw it in finger tight. For the next one, I need to get my bolt started. The bolts are also installed with a copper sealing ring to stop oil leakage. But I need to reach in and lift the chain guide up until I can get the bolt started on the threads. Now what you're going to feel is the timing chain guide is going to want to push all the way to the back. So to stop the timing chain moving over, we're going to use a small pry bar. And we're going to take our pry bar and we're going to carefully slide it into the engine case so that it will support the back of the timing chain guide rail. This way when we screw in our bolt, it will allow the bolt to engage on the little locking mechanism on the guide rail that will hold it in the correct position inside the case. I just want to make sure that the timing chain is not binding up on it and then when we look at the timing chain guide rail, it should be fairly centralized in that timing chain port. Now that we've got the guide rail installed, we're just going to go ahead and torque our bolts. These are torqued to 35 newton meters. Now we're ready to install the next one. This location is going to be the location of our light brown color timing guide rail. So when we're standing in front of the engine, so we would be looking at the crank pulley, the light brown guide rail is always going to be on the lower right hand side. This is the only location for this one. We're going to install it in exactly the same manner where we're going to have the long side of the guide rail is going to be facing the intermediate shaft and we're going to use two of the specialized bolts to mount that in. Same thing, I'm just going to pick the chain up and slide it in until I can get the first one started. That's going to position the guide rail for me. And then we're going to run through the same process again where the second one is going to cause that guide rail to move over. So I need to take my small pry bar and hold the chain rail in place while I tighten the screw. We 
once again, torque to 35 Newton meters. Now that we have the chain rails in place, we just want to make sure that the chain is engaged on the intermediate shaft. The last thing I want to do is I want to take one of my camshaft drive wheels and we're just going to install this in the chain and let it hang outside of the engine block. What this does is it allows us to rotate the engine over and keeps the chain rolling around the intermediate shaft. This stops the possibility of the chain wrapping around itself and getting locked up inside the case and either damaging the chain or the case. So we're going to go ahead and install the next side with our two guide rails. We're going to be using two black guide rails on this side. Same as the other side, the long side is going to face in towards the intermediate shaft. We're going to install the upper one first. So we want to just slide that in and put our first bolt through. That's going to position it. Our next one is going to come in and we want to engage the slot to lock it into place and use our backup pry bar to hold the guide rail across so that it engages the locking tabs. As you're screwing it in, you should be able to feel the guide rail move over as the bolt comes in and lock into place. Once the first one's located, you can go ahead and tighten the second one. And then we're going to talk these to 35 newton meters. Then lastly, we're going to install the lower rail. So I've just pulled the chain back out of the way again. Start with the back one first. and then install the one closest to the intermediate shaft next. If for some reason it doesn't locate, like this one, we're just going to back it off again because I didn't get the pry bar in correctly. So instead of snapping into place, it just moved the guide rail over. So just back it off and start again. And then you should be able to feel as that bolt's coming through and locking in, which it's doing this time. So if something doesn't feel right, just stop, back up, and try again. Okay, lastly, we're just going to tighten those two lower bolts to 35 Newton meters, and we're all done. So a quick check of our work. Both of the chain guides should be perfectly on top of each other. When we pull the chain back, and straight back off the intermediate shaft, you should be able to feel that the chain locks into the guide rail. If any one of these chain rails is hard up against this part of the case right here, then it hasn't located on the bolt correctly and you need to loosen the most inner bolt and reset it again. And then finally, we're just gonna take our camshaft drive wheel again we're going to drop that into the chain. That's going to allow us to rotate the engine freely when we're putting on pistons. Mm -hmm.